Speaking. Today's date is May 20th, 2010. I am an actor and I play the lead role of Angela Aberdeen in the movie you are about to see. I would like to state that the following movie is a collaborative art project between myself and the director Lucifer Valentine that I willingly took part in for a period of two and a half years. During the production of this movie, I signed performer contracts at the beginning of each day of shooting and was informed of and agreed to the contents and subject matter of each shoot prior to filming. I was paid for each of my performances and was also given a safe word that I was instructed to use at any point in time during the filming of this movie that would automatically stop filming for any reason at my discretion. I would also like to state that my portrayal of the character Angela Aberdeen is based on the fictional writings of Lucifer Valentine and is a continuation of the story of the traumatic life of bulimic runaway porn actress Angela Aberdeen as portrayed in his first two movies, Slaughtered Vomit Dolls and Regurgitated Sacrifice, and that the subject matter, narrative, and biographical themes, as well as philosophical, spiritual, and religious concepts in the following movie do not in any way reflect my own personal life, biographical history, philosophies, or religious beliefs. I consider the director Lucifer Valentine. Do whatever you want. I don't care. You can do whatever you want to me. Just keep me. Keep me forever. Use me. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to think. Tell me what to feel. I only want your thoughts. You can hurt me. I won't run away. Not from you. I'll never leave you. I'm your child now. I don't belong to you. I belong to you. Even though I'm not good enough for you, I'm not good enough for you. And I think you're perfect. Satan is perfect. I am yours. Even though you don't want me. I like the way you look at me like you hate me. Please, abuse me. Please. Until there's nothing left of me. Until there's nothing left of me. Destroy me. Destroy me. Destroy me. Destroy me. Destroy me. Destroy me. I can eat and eat and eat, and if as long as I make myself sick, then I'm fine. It makes me perfect. Everything that you're not supposed to you just rip it out of you. It is the most amazing feeling in the world. It's like you're completely cleansed. You like you're you've been pulled inside out. In the same way that it helps you, it's killing you what you're ripping out of you, like, you can't control it. It disgusts me. Like, there's nothing I can do with it. When I was 90 pounds, now that I'm 150, when I was 200, like, everywhere in between. And there's nothing I can do that doesn't make me sick when I look in the mirror. Everything came out of me. It got down to like blood and stomach acid. 
it just gave me this high and I was completely elated and I was completely, I felt so good that the way I gorge myself, the way I'm just this disgusting, needy, fat little whore, like I raced it. I took it all out of me. I stick one finger down there and the more I did it, the more I liked it. You're in a panic. Like, all you can obsess about is food. Um, when it got really bad, like it started happening every single day, I was about 14. The second I woke up in the morning, it was rushing into the fridge and eating as much as possible. Anyone that would give up an addiction that has kept them alive, it was never it was never real to begin with. It wasn't a problem. right at the corner, they'd sleep with the door open. When I woke up, I'd just sit in bed and wait for mommy and daddy to wake up. And I just wanted to be near them and I'd go in there and I'd jump in between them. My mom was always the first person to go downstairs in the morning. She'd go down and make the coffee and that would leave me and my dad. I'm like, oh. I'd sit outside their door because every time they fucked, they'd shut the door. And I knew that. So I'd knock on the door and he'd come out, Daddy, I can't sleep. Daddy, I can't. I'm scared of what's in my closet or I think there's a spider in my room. I'd try to get him to not fuck her. He just kept saying, go to sleep. He never made any commitment to me. He never, he never said thank you. He never said I'm yours. He never said that I was his. I wanted to be wanted. I think he was getting total submission and total love and acceptance and trust. Nothing he could do was wrong. That's what he was getting from me, it was that I'd love him no matter what. Like I'd see him kiss my mother and I'd feel almost cheated. Cause I felt like we had something. I felt like we had an understanding that she was crazy and she had pushed him over the edge and that it wasn't his fault and that I was there to help him and then to have him go back to her was, it was unfair. Always my fault. In my mom's view, it was me. As if I was some other woman coming between the marriage. One day she stormed into my room and called me a whore. And she said, you can't come into our bed anymore. And that was our time. That was our time to bond, and that was our time for me to prove to him that I could be a big girl. I realized that what he had had me believe wasn't true, that, you know, he couldn't get these things from my mother, so he needed to go to me. He still went back to her every single time, so I know that you're doing this because you have to, but if you have to, then you get away from her and then stop. Like, why go back to her if she's so horrible? I started feeling like I'm losing my mom and dad for this. So, 
instead of saying no with my voice, I just started saying no with my body and I started saying no with my actions and my soul and the more I could do to disgust him, the better. If he was disgusted by me, then that meant I was safe. And I started staying away from their bed and I started covering up my body and I started puking. My behavior completely different than the way he fucked me. The way he fucked me was painful and she just liked it so much. And I remember just being terrified of it, being anywhere inside me because I had never put anything inside me. I, I remember losing consciousness a couple times um, and waking up to this heavy feeling in the room that I failed. I knew that it felt horrible, but I assumed that this was part of growing up. See it as wrong. He didn't say I was pretty, but... My name is Angela. Angela Aberdeen. I remember surges of pain as though there was a knife there. Um, like, he might as well have fucked me with a knife. Where he got it from, but he put it inside me. I don't know if, if there was a reason behind it, but I try to get it out of me every day. And you ram your fingers as hard as you can until you're just getting up blood and acid, you know? And I just can't get to it. Be destined for certain, certain paths. There's nothing left of me. And I don't I don't know what to do anymore. Like I I, I wanna make it stop and I don't know how, so I've never known a how. And I wanna learn it and I wanna change something, you know, make someone give a fuck, and just my whole life has been that sick feeling that you get when you're totally betrayed, like your throat closes up, and your heart starts pounding, and your head feels so hot, but you're freezing cold, and you're shaking. I'm going to be in such a better place. Maybe once this life is over, the next place that you go is, is going to be a lot easier on you. I hope that whatever's next is the opposite of this. Mm -hmm.